morning. Sun's out for the moment. Um, welcome to my first outside broadcast, I guess. Um, a little bit self-conscious, actually. Usually I'm just in the shed, and yeah, I'm kind of well, in our back garden. Um, and why are we here? We're here to talk about this, an Omnium eCargo version 3, which I now am leasing from Brighton and Hove City Council which means I can now offer mobile services, which you've all missed. I know, I know, it's been a while. And for me, it's gonna be a damn sight easier than it was. So let's do some shots and look at what this bike does, what it can offer. Um, and yeah, maybe you can get booked in and we'll see each other on your drive, in your shed, in your garden, outside work, in the park, wherever you like. The world is my oyster, as long as the battery has enough charge. So yeah, let's have a look at the bike. Cool, so here we are, a little bit closer. Um, so as I said, this is an Omnium. Uh, they are known for very cool steel cargo bikes um, when I initially started looking into cargo bikes I was really really torn between one of these and the Surly Big Dummy which is what I ended up getting and I missed that bike the Surly but it wasn't it wasn't the one it was tricky to use if you ever saw it, like the boxes on the sides that I kept all of my tools in worked really well, but it still had its kind of um, shortcomings. Whereas with this one, like just having this, this bed here out the front and just chuck anything on, it's a nice normal square space. The Surly relies on using basically big pannier bags. And I think for bike mechanicing and transporting stuff like that, I, I couldn't make it work. I know people do, but I just just couldn't couldn't get on with it. I did my best, and it was great. But hopefully this time round, this is going to work better. So the bike itself, the Omnium Cargo, uh, has been around for a long time. Uh, the the kind of manual version, the the analog version, and then yeah, this is version three of the electric. So this has Shimano steps uh, ep8 motor um nexus di2 internal gear hub belt drive so nothing to worry about there it's got wired and lights um and yeah this this massive bed out the front and there's this rail here which extends so i can increase the capacity of, of, of the bike and what i'm carrying and for carrying bikes with this bike I think that's going to help loads um, obviously it's going to end up being a bit unwieldy but you know we'll, we'll figure it out we'll get there um, we've got own brand finishing kit from Omnium saddle seat post bar stem it's kind of just generic Asian manufacturer type stuff but it does the job um, SRAM guide brakes I really like SRAM I think I've talked about that before. Like, people are really into Shimano, and that's fine, but like, for me, I, I really like trams. They feel good. I've got them on nearly all of my bikes, um, and I'm pleased that this has them, and they're four piston. Um, I'm thinking I've got a list of mods that I'm going to go through with you actually. Um, so we'll come to that. And then it's got the the excellent kind of uh, steering system which I'm going to bring the camera down so you can see a bit a bit more and it reduces it's got such a small turning circle it's really really agile really really nimble so let's go a little bit closer and have a look at those bits okay so what you can see now is the, the bottom of the steering tube down here and then there's the arm that connects the bike uh, the, the steering arm to the fork 
and that's got some really neat touches to it. It looks like a, a trad old fork at the top with the um, brazed fittings. Come and have a look at that. It's lugged. Lugged there, which is a nice little touch. And I mean, the, the aesthetic of all of this, because it's, it's steel, really nice, slender, skinny tubes. Looks, looks great. So let's just show you that steering. Because for me, as someone who's not used to cargo bikes like this, it's kind of cool. Yeah, as you can see, you've got really, really big range of like full lock, 20 inch wheel, big old rim, wide rim, shoddy tyres. And then just tucked under there as well, there are wired in lights that run off the motor, so I don't need to worry about charging lights or anything. Since the bike's dry, uh, on, then yeah, the lights kick in, so that's great. And then let's come further over this way. We've got this nice big board to put some sort of advertising on, so everyone knows who I am. Got a surly nice rack, panier rack on the back, and I've also got some restrap panniers to carry soft goods and bits and pieces uh, that aren't going to be so heavy that I need. I'm envisaging like my rags, my blue roll, my cabling, um, and various things like that. That super solid rack does a rear light wired in there as well and yeah the the bike i'm in in two minds at the moment but it uses a 31 6 seat post if i remember correctly so you can put a dropper on it which for uh like town riding stopping at lights and things like that that's that's a neat little feature i wonder if i will go down that route I'm, I'm in two minds at the moment. This one is a medium, which works out, I think, as a 54 top tube, 54 centimeter top tube. And it's quite a sort of trad square frame. It's quite boxy. It doesn't have like that compact geometry to it. So the seat looks a bit low, um, which is an aesthetic thing more than anything else. And I'm wondering if I'm gonna drop the stem a little bit and maybe make it a bit longer so it feels a bit more like my mountain bikes. Um, my Ritchie and my Banshee that I use both have quite low front ends. So I'm wondering if I replicate that. But time will tell. I'm gonna be on this bike a lot. I want it to be comfortable um, as well as nippy, which with the Shimano system, it is. Um, coming to terms with, with riding an e-bike, I don't have any e-bikes. So it's, it's really, really interesting using the motor to your advantage. And Dan Bianco, who's the guy at the council, who's put all of this together, has run me through a few kind of like cheats and, and tricks that you can use with the motor to, to make it like super, super efficient. So yeah, there's more to come with Dan Bianco. I need to talk, talk a bit more about him at length to do the guy some credit. Um, and then if you're in Brighton or further afield, where could you get one of these lovely bikes? I will tell you. You can get one from Porter in Hove. Um, really good little bike shop. Paul, Paul owns and runs it there. He's a damn good wheel builder. Um, super into his social stuff. There's a lot of rides that go on there. And he sells Omnium and uh, Larry versus Harry who did a bullet bike um, and many more besides if you're over that way it's really worth checking that shop out he's got a, a lovely coffee shop as well um, attached to it talking of that I'm gonna get my coffee now um, so yeah if you need anything he's and you're over that way he's well well set up for like pit stops and and a little snack and a, and a pick me up but also mechanical stuff as well I I've, I've respect the guy a lot I like what he does he's got a, an excellent work ethic probably one of the neatest and tidiest workshops I've come across um, which which is admirable to say the least cool so maybe 
you want to see my my face a bit so let's let's have a little chat and then for the bike check I'm not very good at bike checks really like it's a bike you know it's fancy but look up online there's there's specs and geometries and things like that so I think I think my work is done with that so let's let's have a little chat me facing you and then and then we'll go our separate ways So, um, how did I come across this? So, I mean, I don't know how much information to give you um, what, what's needed and not needed, but I'll kind of give you a rough rundown. So, I had a, a, a bad time last year and ended up effectively out of work. Um, I was in between jobs, uh, employed and then self-employed. Um, my stuff was, was floundering here, but at Hamburg Cycles I still walk my bikes. Um, yeah, 22 was a bit of shit really, a shit year really, so um, when part of that ended up with us, my wife and I having to sign on and get universal credit, um, and quite honestly, I mean we're going a bit more kind of life and existential things as opposed to just bike stuff but I mean we've talked before that you know there's more to this this channel than, than bike stuff and I mean as as a low earner historically and I've had to sign on before and get benefits and it's it's a rough process and through being on universal credit now for over a year well the world just burns around us. It's, it's yeah, it's not it's not been the best time. And I mean, you know, we're we're okay. You know, we can we're up on our mortgage. That's that's okay. We can afford to eat. Um, I'm by no means at the at the, the level of poverty that people are facing. But it's still been rough. And the handling of, of everything with the job centre has been quite eye-opening and I think there's, there's a, a balance in the Department of Work, Work and Pensions of, of compassion with uh, the staff and what they're willing to, to do and not do for you and I've been very fortunate that most of the people I've spoken with over the last 12, 14, 15 months um, have been very understanding. My wife's, my wife's had some more kind of um, tricky encounters. So, you know, and having to go somewhere um, to sort of plead for your money, um, it's not, it's not the most uh, empowering experience, I would say. So I have to go and uh, present my my sort of case. To, to HMRC or Department of Work and Pensions, uh, tell them what I'm up to, uh, show that I'm, I'm being a grown up and looking for work and I'm not just sat at home doing nothing. Um, so yeah, I, I was doing my work as best as I could and I ended up getting a second job um, and doing that as well. And one of the things that the, the job centre suggested was that I uh, start looking into funding and things to, to kick start my, my business to get it back up and running to strength and weirdly enough in the climate that we're facing at the moment there's not really much funding around um, especially for established businesses like mine um, you know I think the, the view is that if you've got a business and you're, you're turning over something then that's better than nothing and maybe you don't qualify for that help however that's the doom and gloom bit over um, I did through sort of furious googling and, and scrolling and finding and looking and, and trawling um, I came across a initiative which like I said is, is um, being managed by Daniel Bianco one of the like 
those people that are in the right job doing the right thing. Um, he, he, there's enthusiasm out of every pore of, of that guy's being, and and he's a, a great person to to be doing what he's doing of promoting um, green initiatives for um, transport and getting people on bikes. Um, he's, he's a top guy, and the the, the project that the council are running which I believe for the moment has been closed, the funding uh, window has closed, uh, is the e-cargo accelerator, accelerator project. And that enables people, or gives people the chance to replace a, a petrol vehicle, or diesel vehicle, for uh, an electric cargo bike equivalent. Um, so to reduce the congestion on roads, to reduce the use of motorised transport um, to get people outside um, and it's a fantastic thing there's there's a business case uh, that you present to uh, to Daniel and his team um, you give an outline of what your business does uh, how you feel like it can benefit you what difference it could make to your existing transport for me on my analogue cargo bike my main argument was that it was just taking me forever to get everywhere and earning enough money with it. So with an e-bike, my distances can double in the same amount of time or I can do uh, the same amount of work in half the time. So it's a no-brainer. And the guys were, were keen on that. Um, when I picked up the bike with Daniel on Wednesday this week, uh, he was explaining that he's got uh, a heating engineer, he's got one, there's a carpenter, there's a gardener, zero waste um, like refills supermarket a little shop thing they've got one so they're, they're filling all of these niches of, of people that don't necessarily need a van or a car but that's the, the kind of the default option so this has allowed me to, to lease this bike um, with a deposit and it's it's yeah hopefully it's it's saved quite a, a failing arm leg of my business really so yeah we will see we will see how the winter goes but yeah I'm, I'm very grateful for Daniel for, for sorting all of this out uh, for Paul that Paul served for making it so easy and giving me the, the advice and filling in the gaps in my knowledge um, to choose this wonderful bike so yeah that's that got a bit deep quick didn't it but I think it's worth worth explaining what circumstances I've, I've found myself under um, and and sharing it with you uh, and yeah hopefully it seems to be a steady trajectory up I'm staying positive in these videos and, and like yeah that, that's something that I've I'm managing to do outside of the videos bikes are being fixed stuff's getting done I'm, I'm good I'm happy so yeah I've gone over the bike um, and obviously, being a bit of a tart, being being a bike mechanic, you, you want to tweak things. You don't want like, the, the stock battery finish. So I've got a few bits that are going to go on, a few uh, plans. I think the first one and the most sensible one is going to be some bigger rotors. Um, the, the I think of one, yeah, one sixty front and back, and yeah, I mean they're four piston brakes, they're surround brakes. But Bit. I don't know, it's quite hilly and bright, isn't it? And you kind of want to stop quick on something like this. So, some bigger rotors are going to be the, the sensible upgrade. Um, I need to look into some cheapest options, cheapest tyres, so I can keep that up and running. Um, and then the rest of it is kind of like, yeah, bits and pieces. So, I've got a set of these. Um, Bars. Like the, the bars that have come on this, they are great, but you know, like I said, they do the job, they're nice and wide, they're good shape. But for me, they're not quite the right shape. Um, again, for what I'm used to on my other bikes, it just feels a bit unfamiliar. So I've got these ones from Bergtech, they're the alloy ride wide enduro bars. Um, I think, what are they? They're 1800, 800 mil, 
the sound here. Yeah, 800 mil. Um, I'll probably cut those down a little bit so I can get the bike in and out of our side gate. Um, and yeah, I mean, I tend to sit on the bars at about 780, 760. I'll probably trim those down. So that's, that's the, the controls. I think I'll probably change the grips as well. Again, these are fine, but you sit doing bike stuff, you ride bikes. I've, I've got very similar contact points, very similar similar controls on all of my bikes so to switch that over I've got some ODI grips in mind that I want to switch out to these ones are lock-ons I prefer like, push-on grips that they're thinner and they feel more tactile so I'm going to make that change as well um, I've also got a Vertex saddle which actually mirrors uh, the Pro Turnix seat that I use on on most of my bikes. It's a little bit thinner padding wise, so we'll see how that goes on the rough roads. I mean, I'm going to be in bib shorts, so we'll see see how that works out. But again, matching it all in, Vertex, good quality stuff. And then because you're not a bike mechanic if you don't have Thompson post lying around, um, this has got a little bit more lay back I think than the one that's on here at the moment. Um, and because the frames are a little bit boxy as I said about, um, I am going to whack this on so that it just pushes everything back a little bit, makes makes it a bit longer because um, I feel like the reach is a bit short. I don't want to tweak the stem length too much. So yeah, that will go on there as well. This one's 27.2 so it's a bit narrower. Um, I'll need to put a shim in but hopefully that will uh, make the bike a bit more flexy, make the seat a bit more flexy. So it's a bit more Comfortable. Um, so yeah, those those are the little tweaks and, and bits and pieces uh, that I'm going to add to it and change just to make it my own. Really. Um, I'm wondering about putting a splash of colour on with, with some of the bird tech stuff. I've used so many different anodized colours. I've talked about those with you guys before. Um, it's too much of a blank canvas. I, I wonder if anyone could suggest some colours that might clash or complement the green. There's some purple in the in the iridescent finish. I'm wondering about picking that up. So yeah, if we've got any got any input, whether it's just keep it all back, stop being such an idiot, then yeah, I appreciate that as well. So cool, I think that's the bike. I think that's me, that's the end of my coffee. Uh Bin Lorry's just perking up now, so it's gonna get very loud very quickly. So I'll cut all this together um, and then I'll come back when I start getting the toolboxes on, which is obviously the, the big step. So we'll come and have a look at that, we'll have a look at the mods that I've done, and then we've got tools you, you need to own, I need to, to uh, get back on that as well. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it today. So thank you Porter for being an excellent shop. Um, I'd go there if I didn't have my shop. Um, you should too. Also, there's a hookup with Drawdax, uh, which you might have seen is uh, a, a good friend of mine who's set up this, this um, self-guided Audax ride that uh, um, tells you, uh, it encourages you to do some sketching and drawing while you're out riding, which I'm, I, I scribble, I think, to sit there and, and take in nature, not just on your bike, but while you're out, is, is a fantastic idea. Um, it's a beautiful little um, Revit card that, that Nathan's put together for it. Um, you can buy it from Porteur. I think you get a free coffee with it as well. Um, and yeah, you just go out, take some pencils, take some crayons, like mud, whatever. Just, just get some creativity. It's, it's never a bad idea. Um, so yeah, digress. Thank you, Porter. Thank you, Paul. You've been great. Daniel Bianco, Brighton and Hove City Council. What an absolute superstar. Um, I'm sure we'll be seeing each other again. He's just such a, a great guy. Um, and yeah, if you are wanting more information on how you can replace four wheels to two wheels um, and get something e-cargo, then yeah, he's your guy. So it's it's the Brighton. Council e-cargo accelerator project.
um, and also yeah, look up Danny Bianco, uh, he's your man. So yeah, take it easy.